Alright. <clears throat> Alright, hello everyone. This is Amy with Bible Prophecy and World Events. Um, I did a message, I wrote this message out um, on August 3rd, 2024, but I initially wrote it down on around July 30th or so. Um, I'm going to start with reading Revelation so that we can sort of get an understanding of what I'm going to be talking about here. Uh, this message is called, It's Incremental. Revelation chapter 13, The Beast Out of the Sea. This is what this part is titled. If you hear some chewing going on, that's my dog chewing her bone. Uh, hopefully it won't be too loud. And I stood up, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, his power, and his seat in great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all of the world wandered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and a power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Pause. I want you to see that the saints are here when this happens. Okay? And all, this verse 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. He is, here is the patience of the faith of the saints. I'm just going to go over this as what the Lord showed me. He that leadeth into captivity, those that leadeth people into being captive, captivity, will go into captivity. The beast out of the earth, this is chapter, um, same chapter, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. That's the Antichrist. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The mark of the beast. And he causeth all, causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And his number is 603 score and 6. Okay, so for those of you who have watched other messages that I've done, you'll know that I've explained all of that in detail and um, how 
Satan is allowed to um, accomplish this by God's permission and God's timing. It's incremental. This is what came to me. The Holy Spirit put it on my heart. And I wrote this down, okay? And then I added to... The, the Spirit of God just led me to put more in here today. It's being done incrementally. The B system is being reset for the one world currency, the one world uh, religion, antichrist religion, and one world government. And the internet is being reset to internet 3.0 in increments. Follow me on this, because I'm, I'm going to show you what I, I see. And when I say I see, that means with the eyes to see through the Spirit of God, through the Holy Spirit, what I'm seeing. It's a visual um, way that God shows me. All the while, as the evildoers and powers say in the One World Forums, as I've shared with all of you in the past, but it's not being done how they announced it would be. By resetting the entire internet, quote, of bodies all at once. Which would, as they have stated by disconnecting, so they would have done this by disconnecting the whole internet worldwide all at once. And that it would be down for about 72 hours, okay? So imagine, that's what they've announced and put in their writings that everything would be down and it would be, uh, you know, it would cause a lot of crisis, of course. But then they would bring the internet 3.0 up and it would, the internet again would be up again worldwide. This is what their words in their writings are, okay? But this is where there's a deception within a deception, so I want to show you this. Then the whole computers, using quantum computers with quantum entanglement through the satellites and the cloud of classic supercomputers, classical, they would be then reconnecting that worldwide internet, right? That's, that's what they've been claiming with people who have been watching them. But no, they are sneakily doing it in increments. It is what I call a deception within a deception. They're giving a narrative. And as the world expects that narrative, they're doing another thing, okay? So they lie. What, what do we expect, right? They are uploading the beast system, Internet 3.0, incrementally in the attempt to go unnoticed. And I'm going to show you how. And this is what I've been seeing. The media says what they're told to say with this. So it's very easy for the lying media or should we say mediums, like in sorcery, which are a lying mouthpiece for the evil powers that be and their master the devil. To claim the outages on the infrastructure are being done because of cyber attacks? Yes, there could be separate incidents that are cyber attacks. However, with the major outages that we've all been seeing, it would be beneficial for the evil powers to support their lies, to have something or someone to blame this on, all the while they are resetting incrementally. It's easy for them to call all of the outages cyber attacks, given the geopolitical war fronts that are in place. Another reason these outages are easy to explain away is because any given country, especially the United States, have and are following, allowing immigrants, okay, in quotes, but really they're illegals and in most cases radicals and violent people, they're letting them in like a flood into the borders. The sudden cyber attacks, and I'm using that because that's what their words are, can be easily attributed to them, to all those people, you write, and, and all the other things. The beast reset is being done incrementally. We see airports, airlines going down, computers going down, everything going down, here and there. 
We see banks, same thing, here and there. We see hospitals, here and there. Power plants, here and there. Cell phone towers and major communications, here and there. 911 emergency call centers, here and there. Police stations, phone lines, here and there. Every facility on the Beast Internet infrastructure is being disconnected incrementally. Okay? Then on, they bring them on and uploading software and being reconnected for the Internet of Bodies, Internet 3.0, as they call it, and it's being done here and there, which in increments will be switched over completely. Why? Because to the vast majority, it will go unnoticed. So you see, the sudden global outage that has happened and that evil powers announced in their global meetings. Let me read this again. So you see, the sudden global outage, the evil powers that be announced in their global meetings, which was a three-day thing, which was a total blackout all around the world, right? Because the, you know, the internet would go out. This is in their writings. It's in their agenda. It's not necessary. They want the vast majority who pay attention to their agenda to think they will be doing a sudden global reset, turn off everything, and reboot with the new software and AGI. No, that's not how it's happening. Also, I've seen in the spirit the incrementalism in those who have been marked which is about 80% of the world so far, or even more, because they have received the beast technology and it is already in them. The difference I've seen in people's activities, their behavior, the growing hate, the absence of love is enormous. It's exponential to put it in the technical terms. The wicked are being partially activated all around the earth. They are receiving commands and tasks. Remember, this is in the P-A-T-E-N-T. -E it's diagrammed, okay? They're receiving the commands and tasks. Wicked tasks. I've noticed this, and as I'm watching specific things, the similarities in gruesome, hateful, and violent things that used to be rare and unheard of are happening daily now all around the earth. I've paid close attention to the United States because I'm here also and I'm seeing the pattern all over. The demons now have an opportunity to possess billions of people, manifest wicked activities through them as they are empty vessels because of what they have put into themselves, okay? There are, of course, those who are wicked who have not yet received the mark, you know what I mean? And so, they're still manifesting demonically too, okay? That's a given. The demonic activity is on the rise because they're coming out of the bottomless pit. Please read Revelation about the fifth trumpet judgment. That fifth trumpet judgment fulfills simultaneously with Revelation chapter 13, where we just read the mark of the beast and the first and second beast. Please read that. Um, on that note, on the bottomless pit, as I've told the elect of God before in a message called the Locust Army, if you want to look at that, I think it's called Seven Trumpets, the Locust Army, that the king of the bottomless pit, Abaddon or Apollyon, uh, read that in Revelation, is operating in the golden calf that many profession, professing Christians worship. Yes, the king of the bottomless pit is operating in that POTUS. And you know who I'm speaking of. And I covered all that in that video. Again, I tell you, as I've shared in previous messages, 
that Obama is in the spirit of Gog, of Magog, that's G-O-G, -G, Gog of Magog. I shared a detailed message on this several years ago when the Lord revealed that to me about him. Again, the beast, first and second beast of Revelation chapter 13, specifically the technology that the beast is using is being reset incrementally to activate every facet of it. It all goes to blockchain and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's quantum computers, it's all, I've explained this in other videos. It's being done in increments. Now, I'll share a testimony of the power of God. I've been seeing more and more people, um, it's hard to say that, there's a lot of things mixed into that stuff that's creatures, okay? that see me walking, so these people see me walking along the way and whatever the wicked spirits are within them, they're becoming more and more uncomfortable. And even those spirits make that person flee, quickly getting away from me. It's extremely noticeable. Take courage in that. That's another thing God's shown me in the spirit. But Jesus said, do not rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lord God Almighty, the Most High Yah, is pouring out his spirit on the elect of God more and more each day. The demons and the enemy cannot withstand or even be near us who have the Holy Spirit and are covered in the blood of the Lamb of God. Jesus said, we will do even greater things than these. Um... Read that scripture too. This is, that's just amazing. We'll do great exploits in the end, the time of the end which we're in. Praise the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai. I spoke to my dear friend and sister in Christ who lives in Australia. Her name is Victoria, about what I've been seeing in the behavior of the wicked uh, when they're around me. And she says the same things are happening with her around those people. So. That's a confirmation to me, you know. Um, and let me know in comments if you guys are noticing that as well. Praise the Lord uh, that He's given us, He's charging His, he's, he's, He charges His holy angels around us. We don't need to know if these people are seeing angels, and they definitely see the light of God because the demons are seeing the light of Christ. They know we're children of the light, okay? They know that, okay? Maybe the but the person, the, the, the flesh doesn't know that. But those demons that are inside of them know that. And they can lay dormant and then they can act out. They can lay dormant and they can act out. They can leave and come and go and hop from person to person. they got so many people now to do that with, okay? 80% of the world. So Remember though, this time of the end, in this time of the end, through it, we must pray to our Father in Heaven that we were able to live a holy life, to live a life of repentance and holiness. Our Lord Jesus is returning soon. He has a work for us to do, so we must walk the narrow path and seek His face diligently every day, every hour. The greatest commandment, Matthew 22. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit gives us eyes to see, okay, and ears to hear. It teaches us in all truth. He will show us things done in secret when we look and see. And I'm going to show you this, Ezekiel, okay? Look and see. That's what I feel God is showing me every time I bring something like this to you guys. And I'm, he brings me to the scriptures. Look and see, Amy, what they're doing. So I'm going to read this, Ezekiel chapter 8, 3 through 6. And he put forth the form of a hand. That's, that's talking about the Lord and took me back by a lock of mine head. The Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north. 
where was the seat of the image. Remember the image of the beast is part of this whole thing too. Okay? Image of the beast which provoketh to jealousy. And we know that was Tam Tammuz in that, which is fulfilling world, you know, for the whole entire world, first for the Jew and for the Gentile, okay? Because we are the temple of God. Um, he brought me visions of God to Jerusalem, uh, visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. And behold, the glory of God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. You know, it's amazing, I want to say something. When God showed me a couple of, it was a dream, that he took me and I saw a huge plain uh, of land, just dry, no grass, anything like that. That was in the, the dream I shared about, um, I think I included in the war dream that I had. So, here we go. Uh, verse 5, Then he said unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way towards the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northern at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel cometh here, that I should go far off my sanctuary? Pause. The abomination of desolation. We are the temple of God. Okay? And so when someone has taken that abomination, he must go far from his sanctuary. The Holy Spirit departs. That's why they're desolate. They will be completely desolate. Let me continue. I should go far off my sanctuary, says the Lord, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. So, do you see? There's these, these abominations that you read. If you read through that, there's creatures, okay? Detestable. So, look at the abominations of this world and the abominations that have defiled and polluted many of those who profess Christ. We are the temple of God. Detestable creatures are in 80% of the world now, including those who profess Christ that took the abomination since 2020. God said if people don't love the truth, He will send them. He will send them a strong delusion so they believe a lie, so not be saved. we got to love the truth of the Word of God. We've got to love Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The truth, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Look at the, I'm going to tell you more about what's going on in, in, in this day. Look at the idols set up all around this country and in the entire world. God's going to destroy them. The world being Babylon now. These are images of jealousy. This provokes jealousy in the Lord God Most High. I shared a message called Swiftly. It's two parts and it mentions many other abominations that this world is committing. All of this is why God's judgment is coming upon the earth and then following will be the wrath of God poured out. And this is a word that I got in the Spirit from the Holy Spirit as I was typing some things in here today. America, don't be so arrogant. The time is coming for destruction for you too. The instruments of God's judgments are already here and more are coming. Yet. You have not repented of your deeds, murder, blasphemy, idols, shedding of the blood of the innocents, apostasy in the places of worship, deceit in the places of worship, adultery, fornications, and all kinds of sexual perversion. The lies from the pulpits are putrid. The doctrine of demons is putrid in the sight of the Lord. Utter destruction, violence, famine, and war is coming. That's what I received when I was writing this. Back to the message that take we gotta take we gotta listen to that. Here's uh, I'm gonna continue on with what I had written before I put while I was going through and I put that in above that. Ask God for discernment. It is critical for the saints. Watch out for the wolves lurking in every street, waiting to shed innocent blood. They have no regard for children of the womb. The women and children will be ravaged. The Bible tells us that as God trains us up in his word, as we read it, God gives us the discernment to know good from evil, to identify it, to discern it. 
Notice, we must study His Word to get more discernment. We need to discern all things, whether they are good or evil. We need to know whether they're good or evil. Even in your own households, soon, there will be a time when no one can be trusted because they are under a strong delusion and they will be utterly desolate. And they will, as Jesus said, turn you into the prisons. They may even kill you. Be watchful, sisters and brothers. Know your surroundings and stay away from the wicked. Don't go somewhere if the wicked are rioting in that area or it is a place where there are many of the ungodly around. If you must go somewhere, choose your place carefully. We have to be wise about these things. This will be, there will be casualties with those who aren't wise if they are mingling with tares. The wicked will kill the wicked. God has given to me those words all the time, almost every day now. For several months I started getting out. Let's read Psalm 34. A Psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, and do not not one of them bro are broken. That is beautiful. I love this scripture. You know, I'm trying to see where the scripture is. Let me look it up again here. That's perfect for, I had written something down already before I even read this psalm. And there's things that I wrote down that the Lord had me write down as a message in the end of this. And this scripture is just more confirmation. It's exactly what we're supposed to do. This is just amazing. Um, let me look up the the uh, Bible verse here. Continuing on with uh, Psalm 34, the wicked shall slay the wicked. God has been showing me this over and over again. So I read the rest of that verse through verse 20. I'm going to read 21 and 22. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Hallelujah. So I tell you, brethren, hear the word of the Lord in Psalm 34. 
hear the word of the Lord. Stay out of the way. The wicked will kill the wicked because God's judgment is coming upon the world. He'll pour out his wrath upon the wicked and he will, take in, he will have taken us to his barn in his Goshen as he has shown me. Uh, and that place was where the Israelites uh, lived during the years of famine that Joseph brought his brothers and um, and Jacob there, but that place was called Goshen. And I didn't know that when the Lord showed me that uh, Goshen will be in his Goshen. So while all this is taking place, before the wrath of God is poured out, we'll be in God's Goshen, okay? And Goshen in the Hebrew means provision and protection, okay? In God's provision and protection, and then those who are alive and remain will be taken up to be forever with the Lord. The dead in first are raised first. The dead in Christ are raised first, and then those who are alive and remain. Now, again, we don't know um, the plans God God has for each one of us. Uh, if we are martyred, and then that is His His will, let His will be done. If He chooses to have some of us labor till he returns and takes us up with him forever, then let his will be done. So we have to be ready to face anything and just pray the Lord's will be done. Um, let me, let me use, uh, I wrote this also, use wisdom, which is only given by the Holy Spirit. God promises to give us wisdom abundantly if we ask for it. That's what the scriptures tell us. So remember, the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. So we must have His wisdom from His Holy Spirit. And this is something really amazing I want to share with you guys. But I went on to say, here are the things we should pray for to live a holy life, to live a life of holiness, which is the sevenfold nature of God and they're the spirits before God's throne, okay? In Revelation, we read that. The prophet Isaiah shows us the names for those seven spirits before God's throne, which is the Holy Spirit. The spirits before God's throne, the seven spirits, are the characteristics of God, the perfection of God's nature, and they explain His holy nature. The Word tells us to pray for the mind of Christ, and I pray for that often. And also pray to have um, the sevenfold nature of God, right? So I'm going to go through this with you. I'm going to read it in for where the, the names of the spirits in front of God's throne are in Isaiah 11. So we're going to start with uh, verses 1 through 6. The uh, title ahead of this is The Root of Jesse. And that is our Lord Yeshua, Jesus our Messiah. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, that's three. The Spirit of counsel, that's four. And might, that's five. And the Spirit of knowledge, that's six. And the fear of the Lord. So these these spirits in front of God's throne are those, okay? And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. Notice the, the, the common, the, the scriptures that we're reading today, the fear of the Lord, okay? We do not fear man. We do not fear government. We do not fear anyone. We only fear. Fear the Lord. He will bless us. We need to trust in Him and fear Him. Okay, it's a reverence. He's holy. So let me continue on with verse 3. And He shall not judge after the sight of His eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of His ears, and shall make of quick, make of Him of, I'm sorry, my reading's a little bit off today, and shall make Him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. 
I'm sorry, I read that already. Let's start again. Let's go to verse 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Side note, Jesus is coming with great power and glory. He was here as the suffering servant, the son of man, to die for our sins. And he was raised from the dead on the third day. And he ascended to the Father and seated at the right hand of the Father. And he's coming again with great power and glory, with a sword coming from his mouth. So here we see, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Praise God. Even in Revelation we read that by the breath of his mouth he kills Satan. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. And faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lay down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a small child shall lead them. Praise God, that's about the millennium and eternity. Let me go further. I'm going to read about the sevenfold nature of God, the seven spirits before his throne. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. This is the worship of the Creator. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits, capital S, Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, the seven spirits. The, the lamp, like, were lamps of fire burning before the throne. So again, I'm mentioning this because... I pray for this often, as much as I can remember, to have the mind of Christ. So again, here's the character of the Messiah, God the Son, and God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. It's listed again in Isaiah chapter 11. The seven spirits before God's throne, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of Wisdom, the Spirit of Understanding, the Spirit of Counsel, the Spirit of Might, the Spirit of Knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. These attributes of God are the way in which we can pray for God to give us the mind of Christ, the mind of the Godhead, the mind of Christ. We're supposed to pray for this. Pray that we have the mind of Christ. And remember, the prayers of the righteous avail much. So pray. As for this, it's amazing. Praise the Lord. Seek the Lord God with all of your heart and truly follow Jesus our Savior. Praise him through the trials, through the tribulation, in the good times, in the sorrow, and through everything. He is worthy to be praised. All of us in Messiah must do that. Be thankful. Be grateful for everything everything. Again, I'm going to say, don't be like that scoffer when the Israelites went to the wilderness and he got everybody on the bandwagon, you know, saying, uh, you know, the one that had them put the golden calf up, okay? Um, he didn't want to go through that. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't love God. And you see what happened to them. They kept murmuring and complaining, we must not do that. We must be thankful and praise the Lord in all circumstances. He blesses us so abundantly. We must desire a closer and closer relationship with him every day. Remember, he loves us. And he wants us to love him, to reciprocate his love. That's a relationship. He calls us friend, sons and daughters adopted into his family through Christ Jesus. It's almost over here on this earth. Praise Yeshua Adonai. Time is short for repentance, and tomorrow is not promised to anyone. 
Be spiritually ready in the Lord every day. Turn away from evil and all forms of sin and all worldly things. This world is perishing and fading away, and soon the Lord Jesus will burn it up with a fervent heat. Let us all keep our focus on being with him forever, together, and being in the new heaven and new earth, and in the new Jerusalem forevermore with the Lord in his glory. Let's focus on that. As things get darker and more violent and wicked in the world as they are, know the power that we walk in. We walk in the power of the Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead. We walk in his power and in the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who are covered in his blood. The enemy hates that. And more and more, as I said, the people that are more wicked, the love of many will grow cold, so they're getting more wicked and wicked and wicked, just, just, just keep them going, right? Violent acts that are heinous. But the, the demons cannot stand the remnant of Christ, the remnant of God. They cannot stand it because they can't be around us. I'm noticing this, and this is something we are, God is doing a big thing. An incredible, beautiful thing, and be encouraged by that. Um, thanks for listening. Please share it, and God bless you all. I love you all in Jesus. Okay, take care.